Classy stuff here. And let's dig into some modern industrialization. So probably the first thing you want to get started with is the forge hammer. Now this thing is reasonably expensive. You'll, you'll probably be going for the iron recipe, but uh, certainly worthwhile. Uh, this thing will save you a lot of resources for some of the other stuff you're going to be crafting. Uh, you're going to be wanting to make an iron hammer probably to start with. There are a couple of other options, but I mean, you might have the diamonds for this, uh, although you're not going to be able to uh, craft them just yet anyway. So iron hammer is going to be your first step. Uh, this is pretty expensive because each of these is four iron plates, which is four iron ingots. So not the cheapest thing in the world. One of the very first things you might want to get into is you can quadruple your ore with it. Uh, now, I think this varies depending on the ore type. You can go from raw iron to iron dust. This will be handy later on once you get some like macerating machines. But for now, probably just smashing it straight into dust is the way to go. And then you can do things with your iron ingot like turn them into iron bolts, iron plates, rings or rods. There's cheaper recipes for all this later on. But for now, this is how you're going to have to craft things. Double iron ingots are probably not particularly useful when you're just getting started. Now, uh, getting a whole bunch of resources is going to be significantly easier if you make yourself a steam mining drill. Now, this is reasonably expensive when you're first starting off, and uh, crafting this copper drill head is going to be your first taste of uh, how tedious crafting things by hand can be in the mod, but uh, there are ways of automating stuff in the future. You're going to want to start off probably making a couple of copper gears, and then I just kind of pre-assemble all the different bits and pieces. Get yourself a copper drill head and a bucket. So once you've gotten yourself the copper drill head, uh, you're going to be able to craft, once you've got yourself some diamonds and a bunch of iron, you're going to be able to craft yourself the steam mining drill. Uh, this is going to get you three by three mining. Now these drills are kind of interesting. They're perhaps slightly different to other ones you've used in, in different mods. Um, if you just craft it, you know, this, 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 this doesn't do anything, which isn't super useful. Uh, but you can sort of right click in a fuel source. And then it's just a matter of uh, right clicking on a water source, which is kind of the, the water that gets turned into the steam. So definitely worthwhile carrying around a bucket of water. And once you've chucked water and fuel in there, yeah. Pretty nice, pretty nice to use. Uh, so if you're doing some mining trips, I would highly recommend taking a bucket of water with you. Uh, because it's, it's quite annoying when you're down underground mining and it, it runs out of water. Even if you've still got fuel, it, it won't work anymore until you get some more water in there. Now this is kind of expensive uh, early game, but it does give you silk touch. Um, kind of picked the the wrong biome to show you this. Uh, none of this is <laughs> silk touchable. But if we come down here, you'll see silk touch. So you don't have to muck around with enchantments. Probably a reasonably easy way to get yourself some silk touch and this thing never breaks, which is quite handy. So you're at this point. You've got your hammer and forge hammer for making better or cheaper plates and other crafting components. You've got your steam mining drill for going and getting a bunch of ore. What's the next step? Uh, that is creating bronze. Now, this is going to be pretty simple to do. Uh, once you get yourself some copper and some tin, uh, this is definitely going to be the wrong ratio, uh, but you can then just manually by hand craft yourself some bronze dust. And this thankfully can just be smelted in a regular furnace and you will end up with bronze ingots. And these are going to be what you're making a lot of your machines out of uh, in the beginning. So you're going to need a lot of this. And even as you progress further into the mod, you're, you're going to need a lot of this. Now, one thing worth noting that we can't get to quite yet is that you can make bronze dust cheaper. If you make it in a machine called a mixer, and you see three copper dust in one tin makes four bronze. Whereas if you craft it by hand, you only get three. So not a big deal if you're just making a couple, but you're going to be making thousands upon thousands of bronze. So you probably want to make sure that eventually this is the way you're crafting bronze. But OK, you've got yourself some bronze processing. Uh, what's the first machine you should make? That is going to be uh, the bronze boiler. Now, this thing's pretty expensive when you're just getting started. Uh, all of this stuff is kind of just different bronze components. So, yep. Plenty of bronze. Again, make sure you use the forge hammer and using a hammer instead of nothing. 
it kind of doubles your output. The new component that you wouldn't have touched yet is these fire clay bricks. So these fire clay brick blocks are made from fire clay bricks, which are made from fire clay dust, which you get by combining clay and brick dust, which is just smelted and crushed clay. So plenty of clay. Uh, and we'll get to this in the future, but there is quite an easy way to make yourself some more clay. So you're not going to be having to go out and mine clay all the time. But once you've crafted yourself a bronze boiler, I would suggest putting this near a water source. Uh, because for the meantime, this is how you're going to be putting water into this thing. Can be automated in the future, but in the beginning, it's pretty much going to be a case of bucketing in water, chucking in a fuel source, and once this temperature gets high enough, we start to produce steam. And steam is pretty much your early game power source for modern industrialization. Now, if we happen to have some uh, other machines, you could chuck them sort of beside, on top, behind, I think even underneath. And this, this block kind of ejects the steam in all of the uh, directions that it can. So probably what you're going to be doing when you're first starting, because pipes are pretty expensive, but we'll, we'll get to pipes in a second. So the first machine I would recommend crafting is the bronze macerator. This is kind of like your, your crushing or doubling it's a little bit more than ore doubling, but that sort of machine. And uh, again, if you place it just beside the boiler, he will start to fill up with steam. And you can just chuck like iron ore or pretty much any kind of crushing recipe into this and it will process it. Uh, the same as crushing with a hammer, although I think, I think you have a chance of getting more um, if you're doing it this way than you do by hand. Um, there's a couple of other handy recipes, like getting dye, like turning wool into string, cobblestone into gravel, you know, that sort of thing, doubling your netherite. Uh, but you can see that if we're crushing things like raw lead, we get the, the single lead dust, then you've got a bonus chance of getting additional, plus a chance of getting some raw silver. Now there is quite a nice way of speeding up these machines, if you've got yourself access to some gunpowder. Uh, if you right click on the machine, I think every bit of gunpowder yeah, it gives you about two minutes of overclocked. Uh, it looks like about double the speed, which can be quite handy if you're waiting for stuff to process. And you can stack this quite a bit. I don't actually know what the limit is, if there is a limit. I've never had this much in survival uh, of gunpowder just laying around. There we go, we check the stack on. And we now have two hours of an overclocked macerator. Handy if you've just done a big mining session and you've got a whole bunch of ore to process. So, once you've got your macerator sorted out, I would recommend creating yourself the bronze compressor. Lots more components, um, you're actually going to have to start making some fluid pipes, and as you get 16 from one craft, it's probably about time that you start using them for transferring uh, steam out of your, your boiler into your other machines. Uh, but once you get one of these set up, this makes things a lot cheaper. So, actually it's the same as a hammer, but you don't have to do it manually. And you can turn ingots into plates, plates into curved plates, and there are some other handy things you can use the compressor for. Uh, potentially a cheaper recipe for crafting paper, yeah it's a bit a bit better. Glass bottles from a bit of glass if you really wanted to do that, and uh, things like turning rods into rings, but you're not going to be making rods just yet via machines, though you can of course still come over to your forge hammer and uh, craft them that way. You can also use your compressor for turning some like crushed materials back into their like main form, I guess you'd call it. So like quartz dust into quartz if you've processed it all through the macerator, but you still need quartz for a craft. And you can do the same with like lignite coal. Uh, you can turn lapis dust back into lapis. Uh, so you can use it for enchanting and yeah, like co coke dust into coke. I don't really think there's a reason for doing this aside from being able to make blocks of coal coke. Uh, but turning coal back into, or coal dust back into coal so you can make torches might be something you want to do. And then once you've got your compressor, maybe it's time now that you stop uh, smelting stuff in a, in a regular furnace. And you can chuck stuff in a bronze furnace. Slower than a vanilla furnace, but it is much cheaper to run. Now when we say it's cheaper to run or more efficient than a regular furnace, that's just because you'll get more steam out of your coal and be able to smelt more items from the steam you get from that bit of coal than you would by just using coal in a regular furnace. But yeah, not, not super fast. Uh, although you can of course use gunpowder on it and uh, get some really fast smelting going. And by this point you're probably getting sick of not having pipes, though you probably would have crafted them from this compressor. But there are a couple of different types you can make. Now, you've got your, your fluid pipes, 
which are pretty handy. Um, if you die your pipes, you can have multiple in the same block space. And uh, then we've got item pipes as well for transferring items. And you can have a total of three different pipes in the same block space. And uh, they'll do like the routing stuff, uh, which can get pretty messy. I guess in this case, it's uh, not too bad, although that looks <laughs> that looks uh, pretty horrendous. I'd recommend making a wrench uh, for dealing with these pipes. Um, pretty easy to you know, shift right click to break them. And you've also got the ability to not break all the pipes in one block space. If you mine it with like a pickaxe or a drill, just break, break all three pipes. Whereas if you use the wrench, you can target specific pipes and not break the other ones, which is very handy. Now, if we decide we want to start organizing our machines slightly better, or slightly different at least, we can do something like this. Uh, and when you're holding your pipes, what I've found very useful is shift right clicking. So when you right click a pipe on, it doesn't actually connect. You can use the wrench to right click on different sides of the pipe um, to create connections if there's something to connect to. Or if you've got multiple, you can shift right click to place it, shift right click again to connect it to something. And then you can connect things like this. Um, so very handy if you've got a bunch just for connecting them like that. Now, fluid pipes are a little bit simpler in that you just have to set the, the output. Can be a little bit annoying how it goes from input to insert or extract. Sometimes you'll end up putting fluids into machines you didn't really intend to, um, but fluids, they don't have any filtering um, and they will just start piping stuff in. Uh, something else useful is you have things like priorities, which we can say, now, I want steam to go into this machine first. So if you run out of steam and you put a little bit more coal in your boiler, um, this machine would be the first one that starts getting something. Now, item pipes are slightly more complicated uh, than the fluid pipes. You still have the same thing where you can have uh, multiple, multiple types. Uh, and this is really how you'd set up a whole bunch of automation if you didn't have something else in the pack for doing it. Uh, now, worth noting that every time you place these, they get placed in a whitelist mode with no filter, so they will transfer nothing. And you have to set both ends. So in this case, let's say we've got some coal. We want to say, hey you, extract coal. And then in here, you insert coal. And there we go. We should start seeing coal going in here if I had set this to extract only. Um, you can, of course, do insert or extract, which can sometimes be handy, but in this case, just output only results in coal going in here. And at this point, you're probably getting really sick of manually piping, or manually bucketing rather, your water into your boiler. This is where a water pump comes in. Um, by now, you've crafted all the different components for making one of these, uh, maybe using tanks. We'll, we'll talk about them in a second, but uh, water pumps are pretty straightforward. Check them in, like surrounded by some water. Uh, I believe having water all the way around makes them run better. I don't know for sure that you need to have these as water as well. Uh, but it can be handy just for being able to bucket stuff out. And this is a great opportunity to use your different colored water pipes. Um, you're going to want to extract steam out of your boiler. That is going to cause the water pump to run, which is going to start producing water. And then using a different colored pipe, you can extract that water and put it straight back into your boiler. And now you never ever have to fill your boiler again. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to set a higher priority. Uh, you always kind of want steam going into your water pump so that it's got the ability to pump out water to produce more steam. So that at least this keeps running, which will probably keep the rest of your machines running as well. Let's talk about tanks. Uh, these things are reasonably handy. They don't hold a lot of fluid when they're these lower tiers. Obviously, the, the higher tiers hold more and more. Uh, but these can be useful for perhaps keeping a, a back stuff of certain things. Like, let's say we wanted to keep water in stock. Uh, this is when it would be nice to set this to input-output, uh, which means it'll probably fill this tank. And then the boiler can also extract water from this if this is kind of not keeping up because you're using too much. And you can do the same thing with steam if you really wanted to. And uh, handily in this situation, it's just going to extract directly into it. Uh, but then this would also be an opportunity. I guess here you would just go for an output. But you could also do input output. Uh, I don't think it's that useful in this situation. But if your tanks weren't sitting directly on top of your boiler, uh, maybe that would be a bit better. 
Now, alongside tanks, you also have barrels that you can craft, and they also come in, in different sizes. And uh, these are kind of equivalent to storage drawers, if you've ever played with that mod, where they can hold a large amount of one type of item. So this can hold up to 32 stacks of something, um, with, yep, that number increasing as you go up the tiers to a ridiculous amount if you get to this point. Uh, now, plenty of situations where this might be useful potentially as an output, although no, we might want to change change the output of the machine. So right there, I'm just shift right clicking on the top of the machine. Um, and you can see it changed to the square, which makes it the output. If we put this barrel on here, nothing happens, uh, but you can set item auto extraction on the barrel. And hey, now we're keeping uh, crushed coal, crushed coal dust in stock. Pretty useful, pretty useful, especially if you don't have like applied energistics or some other kind of storage system uh, in the pack you're playing. Now, another very handy machine you're going to want to craft is the mixer. This gives you cheaper recipes for a lot of things. Um, and yeah, also allows you to sort of duplicate some stone and stuff as well. But uh, we did talk about it earlier, but this gives you slightly cheaper bronze. Whereas if you're crafting this by hand, you'd end up with three bronze. In a mixer, you end up with four. Lots of other interesting recipes in this as well. Red sand, if you ever really wanted to make that. Uh, you can turn wood pulp into paper. You do need a little bit of water piped in there, but again, we've got water pumps, not too much of an issue. And wood pulp is just crushed up logs. So if you don't want to muck around with sugar cane, you can certainly do it this way. Uh, another interesting recipe is being able to duplicate stone. So you supply some water and some lava. It does not consume these, so you could pretty much get an infinite loop of granite going if you needed a whole lot of granite for something. Uh, and same with uh, things like dripstone, which could be nice. You can craft uh, concrete powder and then also turn it from concrete powder into concrete if you need a bunch of concrete. But probably one of the most useful recipes I've come across is crafting clay just from sand and a bit of water, which is quite nice for being able to get things like your fire bricks. In a mixer, you get a slightly cheaper recipe for your fire clay dust and you'll have plenty of clay and brick dust, so it'd be very easy to automate this this if you really wanted to. Uh, maybe you want to build with these bricks. And following on with the theme of machines making certain crafts cheaper, the cutting machine. Now you may not want to make this just yet, as you can't actually use it before you have a coke oven, which we're going to talk about shortly. Uh, but the cutting machine is quite useful. Um, gives you better ratios for like turning ingots into rods. Now I think it is the same amount with a forge hammer, but you've constantly got to make new hammers and you know, or keep them repaired somehow. Uh, so it's a way of automating that. And there are some other handy uh, recipes that you might want to use. I don't know, perhaps you need to make some carpet, but you've only got one block of wool. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, but a very handy thing. But all of these recipes do require lubricant, which you will be unable to craft at this very point in time. But still a machine you're going to want to get. But all right, how do we actually get that lubricant that we need for being able to use this bronze cutting machine? Well, that's where the coke oven comes in. Uh, reasonably cheap, especially now that you've got the ability to automate clay. Uh, the coke oven is going to be your first multi-block that you create. Um, and if you're wondering, how do I build this thing? Do I have to look up an image on the internet? No. If you hold a wrench in your offhand, it will actually show you where all the blocks go. So we can see in this situation, uh, this actually needs to go a block higher. And maybe we'll put this thing here. Uh, but pretty standard kind of multi-block recipe can put the wrench in your offhand and then you get to see where all these bits and pieces go. Although I always find it's a little bit, a little bit tricky to build with all of the stuff on the screen. But there we go, the Coke oven. And if you want to know whether or not you've assembled it correctly, just right click on it. It'll tell you if the shape's valid and it's going to say it's active, although this doesn't actually do anything yet. You're going to need to get yourself a couple of hatches. Um, Definitely an item input hatch, definitely item output hatch, and a fluid output hatch. You're actually also going to need a fluid input hatch to put steam into it. You can see uh, you've got these blocks highlighted, and that's just showing you where things are valid to be put in. So we can decide, hey, we want to put steam uh, in the back. Now you can go on the bottom and, 
and do it all underground. That's certainly an option and would probably be a little bit tidier than uh, what I'm about to do. Uh, but we can get away with this. Just make use of the right clicking. Now this thing's filled with steam. Uh, it's still not very useful as we can't put anything in it. So we probably want ourselves an input and output hatch. Chuck in an input hatch, we chuck in an output hatch. If it's assembled correctly, you'll notice the color changes. Uh, and then we've got this fluid output hatch. Now this is going to be for creosote, which gets created in the coke oven. And that is the only way that you can get creosote. So in this situation, maybe I would chuck the output here. Again, that can go sort of anywhere around it. Uh, and then, hey, let's pipe into a tank. I guess we'll use this pipe just because it's right here. And now, once we chuck some coal into this thing, uh, or coal dust, which is probably what you're going to be getting if you're just macerating all of the coal ore you find, uh, this thing's going to start running, and it is going to be producing coke dust from coal dust, or coal coke. Or I think it's just called coke from coal dust. Coke. Now, worth noting that this isn't a 100% chance of getting creosote. So it's around about a 50% chance, and this creosote we can use in a mixer with a little bit of redstone to get us that lubricant. Uh, so you can set up like a bit of automation producing lubricant, uh, and then I would just pipe that into your cutting machine. Uh, it doesn't matter if this gets full, um, it's just going to void the output, it's not going to block up. Which is quite nice, because yeah, unless you're making a whole bunch of cutting fluid, you're probably going to have more creosote than you need. And now that you've got your coke oven producing you some creosote and some coal coke dust, it's time to think about making steel. Now, uh, if you read through the manual, you'll notice it tells you you probably want multiple of these blast furnaces. Now, these blast furnaces are used for a lot of different things. Initially, uh, without upgrading to the electric tier, you're probably just going to be producing steel from uncooked steel dust. Uh, and this is crafted from iron dust and the coke dust, which you're, you're creating in the coke oven you've just got set up. These things have the ability to share sides of the machine. So if we set one of these up, you'll see it's saying, oh yeah, we want to set up, you know, something kind of like this. And then it's kind of just the same thing stacked up with or without a hole on the top of it. Uh, but you can, and this can be handy for keeping things compact or saving on resources for things like making fire bricks, you can share some of the sides. So this is going to be three valid coke ovens, which can be quite handy. The only thing you need to watch out for, uh, I don't think it's going to show me the sides, it actually is, uh, is you can't put like your inputs or outputs on these parts where it's not going to know which machine it's talking to. Uh, at least that was my experience playing this in survival, but um, I mean, we'll try it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that doesn't work. And uh, this is assembled, yeah, pretty similarly to the coke oven, but of course we're just doing something slightly fancier and sharing the sides. Now you can do the same thing with your coke oven, um, and you could connect another one on the side, but then you couldn't have your inputs and outputs here, so you are a little bit more restricted, um, but generally you've probably got enough places uh, where you can put inputs and outputs. And I need to go one layer higher. And here we go. So. It looks like this has worked, but you'll see this blast furnace says that the shape is valid. However, this one does not. And uh, if we replace this, oh, my, my drill has ran out of water. It's going to be a thing that happens. Uh, if we replace this with some more fire bricks, now both of these say that they're valid. So no point in uh, sharing sides of the machine if you're just going to stop one from working completely. Uh, you can, of course, use the, the outer edges for different bits and pieces if you want to. Um, nothing's stopping you from doing that. Uh, but you're kind of restricted to like these areas for the center one. Uh, and these things, they're going to want fluid input hatches for your steam. Uh, and I actually like to put them directly underneath. steam. Now, this is probably where you might start running into issues by not having enough steam, but... Uh, Nothing too major, nothing too major. And then we got our item inputs where we're going to put our uncooked steel dust. Uh, and I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll chuck these here. And then you're going to want your item outputs, which is where your steel dust is coming out. Now we can, of course, 
use these corners on these outer ones. But if we want to keep these shapes valid, we can't put it here or here, so probably come along and uh, maybe check it in the middle of the back. Or if you want to keep it uniform, maybe you'll put them all at the back. And you know what, I think that would probably look slightly better. And there are probably nicer ways to run things than what we're doing here, but this is going to work quite nicely. Uh, we'll connect them there. These things will now be fired up. And we just, of course, hide all our, all our piping almost all underground. Uh, and then if we had ourselves some steel dust, which we can, we can actually craft some of this. A bit of that and a bit of that. Uh, we'll come along here. Now there is also a mixer recipe. So here we're getting seven iron dust and two coke dust turned into seven uncooked steel dust. But if you use a mixer, you'll get slightly more for the same amount. So more efficient to use the mixer. Uh, and yeah, there we go. And then the reason they recommend uh, having multiple of these uh, blast furnaces is because you're going to want a lot of steel and it can be quite painful waiting for this to finish. You're going to need a lot of steel as you move further into modern industrialization. So that'll get you started in modern industrialization. We'll come back in the next video where we look at how you get to making electronic circuits preparing you for the electric age.